thanks for uh, everyone who's, who's here should uh, give themselves a pat on the back because they're the only people who are participating in society in a genuine way. You know, I, I, I think Australia is a culture of complete apathy. Like I love Australia, but I would never get a Southern Cross tattoo because Australia is good now. But like, what if it becomes shit and I'm stuck with the tattoo like a moron? You know, like a bit before World War II, some people got the swastika tattoo oh. that didn't agree with all the shit Hitler did. Like, what I'm saying is, like, what if Gillard thinks Rangers are the superior race and we just don't know about it yet? You know, after World War III, people would walk up to you in a pub and go, hey man, is that a Southern Cross tattoo on your neck? You'd be like, oh, no, man, no, no, it's the, um, it's the New Zealand flag. Ha ha ha, ha ha, fish and chips. Ha ha, fish and chips. You know? Like, like most of the guys with the Southern Cross tattoo couldn't even sing the national anthem. You know, they get halfway through the verse first and start going, oh, Canada. You know, they don't know shit about Australia, and yet they're the guys really opinionated about immigrants. They say stuff like, oh man, we grew here, they just flew here. I like to play along with them and go, yeah man, I really hate the Chinese coming here, getting medical degrees and shit. Yeah, yeah, we drink here. They just think here, yeah, fuck those guys. These guys are assholes the way they don't intimidate you on public transport late at night. You know, I really hate those guys, you know? Like, like they say, immigrants won't integrate into society, but how many white people don't integrate into society? Yeah, that meth head who lives down the road, yeah, he's a model citizen, isn't he? Yeah, he was probably born in Centrelink, you know? Like his mum just popped him up on the counter and went, oh, it's been fucking baby bonus. Where's me vagina money, you know? Like most of those guys with the Southern Cross tattoo, like they'll take credit for like the good shit in Australia, but they never acknowledge the bad shit. Like did you know when Captain Cook came to Australia, he bring Africans from Africa to Australia because he thought they'd be able to translate with the natives. Like that is some advanced racism right there. That's like passing racism school with audits, you know? Like even people from the KKK would be like, what a fucking asshole, this guy's a joke, this guy's just unreasonable. It's like, no wonder Captain Cook got harpooned in Hawaii, what kind of racist shit was he doing there to the natives? Just did like a big shit on the ground and went, oh that's ground, that can translate, yeah, what are they saying? Yeah, they seem pretty angry, don't they? You know, I always find it funny how we recognise the indigenous as being the traditional owners of the land, but they never get to have the land. You know, it'd be like you if you came home to your house and you just saw me sitting in there and you're like, dude, what the fuck are you doing in my house? And I was like, well, I recognize that you're the traditional owner of your house, but um, it's mine now, fuckwit. So, you know, enjoy the plaque and, and don't worry, every six months you get your own show on SBS, so it all works out. It all works out, you know. You know, like the, the, the British came here and, it, and, and called the native savages in a time where back in England, people used to shit out of their window. You know, oh, look at these savages, they don't even have windows to shit out. These people are primitive. Yeah. But, uh, you know, like, it, it's hard not to be judgmental of, uh, of the everyday folk, you know, as, as people who are politically in line. You know, they say never judge a book by its cover, but, like, what if that book has a rat's tail and uh, it's drinking a rum and coke? And his nickname is Nugget, you know. Like, I'm pretty sure that's a shitty book. Like, that's a book that I can't even read, you know. You know like, you can't help being judgmental. Everyone's judgmental. You know, like, do you ever do this when you see, like, the teenage mum in the shopping centre just, like, pushing the pram full of regret, you know? And, like, even the baby's got to... You know, even the baby's got a look on its face like, I shouldn't exist. Like, uh, what am I... Why am I alive, you know? Like, do you ever think postnatal depression is just logic kicking in? Well, Mrs. Johnson, it seems you're suffering from logic and self-awareness. Congratulations. Uh, everything's in order there. You know, but it, it, you know, you shouldn't you shouldn't judge because, like, the average person, it's hard for them to you know do anything other than work nine to five. Has anyone ever tried to learn the guitar by show of hands? You know, it's hard. You know, you. Yeah. Yeah, and then for some reason you just end up stopping, you know, and then you have your guitar in the corner of your room, 
just reminding you of what a piece of shit you are and how you can't follow through with anything. You know, just like a monument to your mediocrity there in the corner. You know, and then you end up like wanking into a tissue and you just I can't even be bothered throwing it in the bin, so you just lie there on the bed, just with it on the corner there. Just the tissues in between you and your dreams, in between you and the guitar. Tissues! <laughs> Try and keep up, lady. Right. You know, I, I think it starts in school, because they don't give you any, like, emotional intelligence. They just give you all that shit like, you know, if John's got 10 kilometers and Sarah's got $5, how many apples does Jim have? You know, all that fucking useless shit. You're never gonna fucking use. It's so boring. It is. It's so boring. <laughs> you know, like, like, give us some practical advice at school we could use. Like, if Shane moves 6,000 kilometers because he fell in love with a 31-year-old lesbian, what are the chances he's gonna waste six months of his life? You know, give me some practical <laughs> advice I could have fucking used. You know, and, and what do people do? They go to school so they can work a shitty job they fucking hate. Like some office shop where you type it away all day. Like when you die and your life flashes before your eyes, do you really want to see Excel spreadsheets? You know, like you find your way up to the bright light and like a paper clip pops up and says, hi, I, try, I see you trying to get into heaven, can I help you? No. Like you know what I hate are those people who are in denial about how shit their jobs are. And they're like, yeah, no, I love being the vice assistant to the bloody de blah. You know, because those people are in denial and there's a moment in every job where you realize how shit it is. Like, you know, like in porn, like right when they're like, there's that money shot and there's that flinch, like, oh, I should have started harder in school, should have paid more attention. You know? <laughs> like, what I'm saying is reality always hits you in the face and you can't avoid that. You know, like so many of my friends have stopped following their dreams because of this idea of financial security. You know, like, you know, they go, oh, Shane, uh, you know, I go, oh, how's the art going, man? How's that going? It's good, man, but I'm just doing this accounting course because it's good to have something to fall back on. It's good to have a bit of security, you know, and then they end up being 40, forgetting they ever had dreams, realizing the only thing to have to fall back on is the top that they made for themselves. <laughs> no, but I mean, I guess you've got to have something to fall back on. I mean, even Jesus was a carpenter. <laughs> you know, hey Jesus, how's the Messiah thing going? Yeah, it's good man, but I'm just doing this carpeting course. You know, good to have a bit of financial security in case being the son of God doesn't work out and shit. It's good to have a bit of security, yeah. You know, and then, yeah, they just end up working. Like, I, I remember reading this study recently that said a lot of the top stockbrokers, CEOs, and politicians are actually psychopaths that have brain damage that stops them from being able to empathize with other human beings so they don't care about the human cost of their actions and that's why they're successful. And when I read that study, I felt validated because you know how for a long time Galileo was persecuted for his belief that the earth revolved around the sun? Well, much like Galileo, I was persecuted for my belief that my boss was a cunt. And, uh, you know, it's good we finally got the science to back it up. Yeah. You know, and these people get into power and then like this royal family, it's been going on for like millennia, these royal families keep interbreeding because the appeal of more money is more palatable to them than the idea of not fucking your cousin, you know? And so that evil DNA gets bred down the chain, you know? It's like, what do you think George Bush Jr.'s first words were, you know? Like, fucking... Uh, you know, a thousand years of darkness will be upon us. You know, that, that was his first words. These people are evil psychopaths. You know? Yeah. And I, you know, I don't understand why, you know, I, I, I think another big part of what's wrong with Australia is the drinking culture. You know, people are celebrating, like, getting brain damage. They're like, oh yeah, fuck yeah, have another drink, man. You know, it, like, I don't, if, I don't understand if alcohol is illegal, how come pot isn't legal, you know? Like I've never had a stoner try and glass me. You know, like at least not that I'm aware of. You might have been trying to, but just kind of like muster the energy or some shit. You know, like family guy came back on, he just like forgot about the whole thing. You know? Like having pot illegal doesn't stop anyone from getting it. How many sandwich bags do you think are actually used to sandwiches. <laughs> Let's be adults. You know? And like, come on, life's just an experience. Like, what's the happiest moment of most people's lives? You know, when they look at their newborn baby in the eyes, 
That feeling is just chemicals in your brain. It's only a matter of time before they make a drug that gives you the same feeling. You know, women would be in the toilet, snorting newborn off the toilet seat. <laughs> just, just got my eyes. You know, like don't get me wrong, like I think drugs are bad and I think that's why they should be legalized. So they can make better drugs. You know, like one company might get the idea of putting like fluoride in the meth. That way in the before and after photos, as the faces are getting worse, the teeth are actually getting better. <laughs> yeah, it's got the face of a homeless man, but the smile of a winner, yeah. <laughs> the system's working, you know. And yeah, like, uh, has anyone ever done acid or mushrooms here? Woo! Yeah, and was it a, a positive experience? Yeah. That, that, sh sh that enhanced your life? Yeah. yeah. Did you know magic mushrooms grow on the lawn of Parliament House? I mean, nature's trying to fucking help, you know, all they have to do is go out there and grab one of them. Could you imagine how much different question time in Parliament would be? You know, Mr. Speaker, what is reality? You know, all in favour of another war, all in favour of hugs, you know, it would be a better world. Yeah, yeah, what else do I want to talk about? I don't know, I think, I think a big part is the culture. Like, I don't think it's an accident that the Renaissance and the freedom from religious tyranny coincided with the biggest boom in art and human history. You know, like if they painted the Mona Lisa today, would anyone give a shit? You know, like if this guy painted it in his garage and his friends came over, would they care? They'll be like, who's this fucking bad bitch without any eyebrows? I don't know, let's go get a drink. You know, like, have you, like TV is such a fucking, just watered down, anesthetizing people. But, uh, you know, I, I think I think the other thing is like people look back on music and they see all the great artists, you know, like the Beatles and Jim Morrison and stuff, and they go, well, where are the Jim Morrisons of today? You know, but they, they forget when he was around, he wasn't number one. The number one song when he was around was Sugar, Sugar, dun, 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 dun. Like what I'm saying is we've always been retarded and we always will be. It's just people <laughs> look back at history with rose-colored lenses at the turd of human history and they just see a bit of corn sticking out of the turd. They go, oh, Jim Morrison, you know, they don't notice the shit surrounding it, you know? And, and by that same logic, there's no point complaining about the bad music of today because there's probably really good shit out there that just isn't getting attention, just like back then, you know? Like, because I reckon in 2050, They'll be looking back on 2012 as a great time for music. You know, in 2050, the number one song will probably be a dude with a dildo and a tambourine just going like that, you know. And people will be like, where are the great musicians like in 2012, like the emotional Hyman Breakers and all those amazing bands? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. What else do what else we want to say? What do, you, what do you guys think about gay marriage? Yeah, like, I don't care, as long as it's not an arranged gay marriage. <laughs> I'm against that shit. You know, and they, they don't want, like, gay people adopting kids, but I'm more worried about Bogans raising kids. Yeah. I mean, like, some of these kids are, like, bored of rats tails for crying out loud. You know, like, the water breaks, it should cure Jack Daniels coming out. You know? Like, like, like I think they should make Bogan marriage illegal. I mean, God created Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Sharon, okay? Not Adam and Sharon. You know, but like the whole thing about the gay marriage debate is, is flawed because everyone's like, thinks it's really progressive to ask the government to be involved in people's love lives. When did marriage become a legal institution? You know, marriage has nothing to do with government, okay? When people say, marriage is between a man and a woman, I agree with them and I go, yeah, that's right. It's between a man and a woman not a man and a woman and the government, okay? When I'm jacking off at home, I don't have a government agent coming in there <laughs> to supervise that shit, right? Get government out of blood, okay? The whole gay marriage issue shouldn't be about fucking going to government like they're your fucking lord and go, oh please, can I have permission to do something that has nothing to do with you? So it's a complete false fucking debate. Yeah, what, what other shit do I want to say while I'm here? Um, yeah. Has anyone ever done one of those, uh, 
Anyone who's done one of those corporate team building exercises at work where you close your eyes and you fall back into each other's arms? Has anyone done that? But you know what it is? They do do it. I, I'm sure like a lot of you aren't even employed, which is a good thing. That gives you time to actually think and reflect like what human beings were fucking evolved to do. But yeah, they do these team building exercises where they close their eyes and they fall back into each other's arms. That's not about trust. That's about you going against your instinct of not falling back for no fucking reason. And to, so that in 10 years later, when the corporation wants you to, you know, go fucking, you know, fucking sell some slave made clothing, you're gonna go against your human instinct of not exploiting people. You go, no, I don't wanna lose team, team champion points. I'm a team player. Uh, uh. Yeah, you know, I'm not as cynical as I used to be. You know, I used to think everyone was an idiot, but then I just realized it's just that dumb people stand out more. So you think everyone's an idiot. You know, like it only takes one guy licking a window on a bus to make the whole bus look retarded. You know, like, like all, all my friends and stuff, you know, that fucking yuppie, dickheads who are pissing their lives away and you know marrying people they don't even like you know and they're just going with the flow they oh Shane why are you so negative you're so negative all the time why are you so negative I'm not fucking negative all right stop calling me I'm pointing out reality okay it, if I was on a plane with these people and the fucking pilot was dead and I was like the pilot's fucking dead we're gonna crash they'll be like oh why are you being so negative why are you being Stop distracting me, I'm trying to watch the in-flight movie, alright? Why are you so cynical, man? You know, I think depression is a good thing. Depression, we're actually meant to feel depression, okay? You know, like, depression's a good thing, because it makes you aware of the shit parts of your own life, whether it be your personality or your environment, you know? You know, and there's so many arrogant fuckwits out there who should be depressed that aren't. It would be better people if they were depressed. You know, like a, a suicidal thought a day keeps the inner cunt away. That's what I believe. These people should be depressed. Um, what else? What else do I want to say? And like, you know, I, I understand, like, there's so much investment people have in the day-to-day -day job, and if it's not about that, it's pretty much about sex, because it's the only thing they've got left. You know, and, and fucking romance isn't all it's cracked up to be either. But over, like, sex and romance in the one are the most oversold fucking ideas in our culture. You know, like, from an early age, we're told, you know, fairy tales like Rapunzel <coughs> leaving her hair out the window. You know, to me, as an adult, that's not a very good story for children to hear, because, if that's not love, someone leaving that hair out of a window, okay? Because any any bitch you're trying to like crack onto in a tower, you don't know very well, right? <laughs> that sounds like a one-night stand to me at best, right? That's not love, all right? You know, and people go out, you know, thinking they have to go to nightclubs and stuff, and they you know, become gym junkies, yeah, 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 you know, and then and like like nightclubs are just full of the worst people. Just gym junkies and like those girls that wear the super high heels that like give them the posture of like a dog if you hold it up by its front paws just walking around and go, oh yeah, no, I'm fucking princess, you know? Like an orange prey mantis, you know? And you just think, yeah, that's hot. I want that to be the mother of my children, yeah. That's not going to try and eat me in my sleep or anything. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful, beautiful. Like, you know the kind of girl I'm talking about, the fake tan, fake smile, fake nails, but a real slut? You know, like seriously, like if you've never been at a nightclub at like 2 a.m. sober, you gotta do it just to see like the level of consciousness some people are at. Like I went there and I saw this like chick riding up against this dude who's against the wall, just going for it, just going, oh yeah, fuck you. And like the dude, he just like wiggles out, just like leaves in there, and she didn't even notice. That's how wasted she was. You know, it was at that moment like I realized like that's someone's daughter, you know, that's someone's little princess. I would have loved to just like film that and like break into a house and like splash that footage at the end of one of those ballet recitals. You know, that way when the family comes home for Christmas and they go, let's do Grandma Little Susie's ballet recital. It just goes from all this shit to just fucking yeah, fucking yeah. Mm. 
just so they can see that little princess all grown up in the world, participating. Participating as an adult. You know? Yeah. And I, you know, I think with the Occupy Wall Street movement, what you have to really do is you, it, it needs to be, I don't know, like without sounding condescending, I've been around the country, I follow this shit on the internet, I follow all the Ron Paul people, I follow all the Chomsky people, okay? And there's a lot of fucking circle jerking, right? That's all it is. Oh, we're better than... All you have to do is you have to take the stuff mainstream and show how it's more relevant than fucking sports. All right? Sports is the worst thing that ever happened in this country. You know, like, how come I know who Sir Donald Bradman is? Okay? And there's a guy in Australia who created a vaccine that prevents cervical cancer. I don't know what his fucking name is, but I know who Sir Donald Bradman is, a known racist. You know, he was a racist. That's probably the reason he was able to hit the cricket ball so well, because he probably imagined it was black people coming at him. All right? He's a fucking racist. He was a nothing. You know, an absolute nothing. Like the thing about sports is it gives people that sense of community and validation of achievement that people are lacking in their lives. You know, because people like I saw this interview from like uh, people from Ian Thorpe's hometown, and like these people are like, yeah, no, we're real proud of Ian. Yeah, no, no, that's what you get when you grow up in blah blah blah. You know, people just love to take credit for shit they had nothing to do with. You know, like I'm pretty sure. The reason he got good was so he could leave those fuckwits who grew up with. Like, that's, like, do you think Luke Skywalker gives a shit about the sand people? Yeah, we're all proud of Luke. Arr, 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 arr. You know? And, like, people get so worked up about state of origin. Like, and some people get into punch-ups over that kind of stuff. I think violence over sports is even more retarded than religious conflict. Because at least Jesus and Muhammad don't change teams every season. You know, oh yeah, no, uh, yeah, Muhammad's playing for LA Galaxy now, oh, yeah, he's even Posh Spice is doing well, you know? Like, I wish I could be religious, you know? Like, I would love to be religious. Like, whenever there's a problem in your life, you know, you could just like, you know, flip through a Bible and wear your bib dibbly bib dribble and just like spaz out on Jesus. Like, I would love that. I would love that, you know? But I can't. Because I'm not that, I would love to be that stupid. I wish I could. <laughs> like the thing about Christianity and every religion is none of them actually follow the fucking religion, right? Where are all the Christians with homeless people? You know, oh, do what Jesus did. Yeah, remember when Jesus went around hating gay people? Remember that chapter in the Bible? And the Lord did say, you know, like, yeah, it, it, yeah. It just, it just frustrates me, you know, people, because what's happened with Jesus is people have started to idolize him as opposed to the message. And this is what has happened with every single religion in human history. Buddhism, like there's a story in the Bible where Moses comes down and he says, do not worship false idols, you know? And then he goes away for like two days and he comes back and they're like worshiping a golden ox. And he's like, what the fuck did I just say? What did I just say to you people? And he's like, yeah, that's why he fucking went up there and put it in stone for you retards. You know, it's the same thing that's happened to Jesus. It's just that, because first of all, and who, like, in, the, in an age where people were stoning each other to death in the street, I refuse to believe there was only one person going around saying, you know what, maybe this isn't a good idea. You know, oh, what, a gen what an intellectual this guy is. This guy's our Messiah. Oh, what a, what a smart man. And then what would happen is, and uh, good luck. Woo!